Okay, what you have here is a 500cc street label go kart. Okay, single sided swing arm, independent front suspension, homemade front suspension for sure. We run the 96 inch wheelbase and the 56 inch uh, tread width. Okay, uh, the reason why we ended up with a 96 inch wheelbase is the fact that uh, we have to use up so much space here for the existing stock uh, exhaust system which takes up a lot of room here. Of course we're going to use this space here for our batteries and other uh, essential items. We tried a uh, reverse gear here with a, uh, a lot more starter and uh, we had problems with it because it's, it's actually geared it's, it's work, uh, the gearing on it's too fast it spins, we don't have enough power with this unit. So we're going into plan B. This was plan A. It really didn't work out too good. We're using a uh, bicycle uh, uh, rear brake, which is activated up here by this handle here. Yeah, this, this holds and locks our rear brake. Of course, the relief, you just pull up on the handle. And the reason for this is when you start this motor, if you know of some way to stop this system, we have to have uh, a brake somewhere. So this, uh, when you go to start your, uh, your system, you should have your brake locked up, just in case you come up on the res because of the automatic transmission system associated with your snowmobile engine. Now the front suspension here, you see we went with a simple go-kart single arm unit here and if you notice too we have uh, what you call a true Ackerman uh, system here because if you look at the angle of this wheel here versus the angle of this wheel well we have a real true Ackerman uh, steering now this this we're going to try because of the simplicity of it and the weight reduction I have very little weight added by adding this versus a rack and pinion we could have gone with a rack and pinion, but the weight of a rack and pinion is a little bit heavier than what we, uh, we plan. And what you want to have on a, uh, a three-wheeler is a high roll center. The reason for a high roll center is because you have a single pivot wheel back here. It's not like you have a four-wheel vehicle. So you want to have a higher roll center to keep the front end from rolling over when you're going to your turns. So this, this angle here, and this angle here gives you a higher roll center, which we estimate our roll center probably about six inches above the frame level here, somewhere close in this area here, to prevent this uh, front end from rolling over on us. Because of our frame construction here, you'll see a real long fabricated uh, spindle arm here, uh, which actually uh, helps us as, as far as putting the stress level on, on our joints, our ball joints, because of the, uh, the extra arm length you have. Of course, the longer the arm, the less stress you have on your, uh, your rod end joints and your ball joints. It gives you more controllability. The fabrication of this is done only welding here, and then inside on the, uh, the seal part here, the rest of it is uh, just a straight rod that comes out through, which is chrome molly by the way, and attached here with a simple lock nut. Uh, these are standard 15 inch wheels with the uh, five lug, uh, I think it's four and a half inch uh, centers for your five lug. All your front dragsters use this simple setup here and the rims we use, we can spend more money and get lighter rims and even uh, to help get rid of some of this extra weight we have. The rotors we're using here are rotors that would probably handle a 2,500 to a 3,000 pound vehicle. They're standard automotive uh, rotors, Wildwood uh, brand name rotors that we're using and they're way, way too much for this vehicle. For the weight of this vehicle, we're, we're way over uh, brakes. Right now, John's putting on the uh, coil shock units. Uh, we have, uh, this is a 60-pound, uh, is that 60, John, or 50? 
60 pound uh, per inch uh, spring rate which I think it's going to come in real close to what we want. We had difficulty in finding the proper spring for this because the uh, we're only putting 45 pounds of weight up front on the uh, the springs per side. You're on the bump stops right now. Right now so we're on the bump stop so he has to uh, crank in more uh, Get off, Dave. more uh, adjustment on the springs. We're trying to use the uh, the tachometer from the, uh, the snowmobile, which is electric, so that's no problem. Biggest problem we have is with our speedo. We have to come up with some way to uh, pick up our uh, our speedometer uh, readings. Now we have several ideas how we're going to approach that problem. We still haven't worked it out because this is a mechanical setup. We have to mechanically attach it to one of our wheels through gearing and get the proper gear ratio. So we use the standard snowmobile speed on it. And the reason why we like to keep the speed on it because both of them look alike to start with. But this has a high warning light for low oil or high temperature on your motor. Our gas pedal assembly you'll see uh, is fabricated. We'll have a, uh, and, and our pedal assembly it does have a uh, reduction in, uh, or a adjustability to it. So if your legs are short, we can always move it back. If they're long, we can always move it forward. We're coming up with a simple uh, throttle system here. We have yet to put a stop here. We have to put a stop in here. This, this is to keep uh, eager guys from uh, breaking the cable here when uh, pressing too hard on the, the throttle. With the two-stroke setup and the uh, instant response from your two-stroke engines, you want to have the best possible feedback with your throttle as possible. Especially if you're taking this into a turn, real tight turn, and you come up on the gas a little bit too much, you're going to lose it real quick because of the, uh, the quick response of your two-cycle. Uh, we're not changing anything here on the drivetrain. This is all snowmobile setup here, belt. Same setup. We had to, of course, mount our bearings in here and then add a sprocket here for the uh, for the chain drive sprocket. Hopefully, we have the proper ratio right now for this uh, setup in order to give us. Uh, we're looking at a top speed, probably around 90 to 100 miles an hour. With this, uh, how is the uh, sprocket setup arranged in the back here? Well, here again, we'll use the same concept uh, we did with our front spindle. It's welded here. This uh, chrome molly axle is actually a hollow axle. We drill, we drill through on the axle to make it tubular in order to help reduce the weight. Uh, the welding is not actually done on the, the axle itself right here in this area here. We weld a, a sleeve on here that gives us our, uh, our seal on our bearings. The only welding on our axle is done back here. Single sided swing arm, and which is, gives us plenty of rigidity. John right now is making adjustable uh, adjustment on the rear tire here because we're out, we're out of adjustment just a little bit. So we have to bring the tire back into our uh, alignment. Uh, we're we're going to use a battery with a, uh, a starter. And our plan B for our reverse gear would be to have a permanent magnet starter, solenoid operated permanent magnet starter, that we can activate the, the solenoid with a cable and actually reverse the starter and run the engine in reverse in order to give us a reverse operation we need. Personally, I don't think we need a reverse because it, it'll be light enough that we can pick up either front end or back end and turn the vehicle around if necessary. If we we pay attention to the uh, 300 pounds and try to keep this under 300 pounds. Probably going to pick up an additional 25 pounds or so with the time you had your lights, your turn signals, and uh, the sheet metal we have. Everything's uh, sheet be sheet metal, no fiberglass. Uh, the only thing we're going to have for fiberglass would be a fiberglass gas tank that sits in this area here. And it also has the oil reserve for your two cycle and holds the uh, your gasoline that you need 
So hopefully they'll both run out at the same time. You run out of gasoline, you should run out of oil for your two cycle. Our fabrication of our frame, that all these tubes here are uniformly the same. They come off our, uh, our roll situation. Chrome alloy tubing, one inch diameter, 40, 49 thousandths wall. All these are the same. So when we fabricate, all we have to do is string our tube through here put this unit together on the, uh, our fixture. This allows us to build our frame very quickly and very accurate and very strong. And the key thing uh, with the, the frame is the, the weight reduction. The frame alone, I think, would we weigh the frame in, John? I think 70 or 80 pounds, the total, total weight of our frame, less the suspension, of course. The engine's basically a 500cc Suzuki uh, two-stroke. We did change the compression ratio a little bit. Uh, we used a copper head gasket versus our fabric uh, gasket they had. So we get a little bit better performance uh, than the standard snowmobile setup. Basically, we haven't changed the motor much. We ran the motor. We did overhaul the motor and everything and put it back in the snowmobile because we initially had problems with it. So we overhauled the motor, had a crack uh, skirt on the piston. We took uh, the snowmobile out and made sure it ran real good before we pulled the, the motor for this setup. And we found we could almost lift the, uh, the front end of the snowmobile up when you get on the throttle. So, and that's a 500 pound snowmobile uh, setup. We expect our performance to be a little bit better if we keep our weight down around 350 pounds with the same motor. So you can see what happens when you drop 150 pounds off of uh, your system. What kind of performance you're going to have. We did add this extra snubber here because uh, the cradle we have for the motor, if you want to drop the motor out, you take two bolts out and it drops out the bottom. Or you, Instead of dropping out the bottom, you really just pick the frame up off the motor. We found that uh, maybe that's not necessary because the motor actually four bolts unbolt the motor and, and will come out this side. All you do is just cock it a little bit and just pull it out. Uh, pull the motor probably in the neighborhood of what, 10, 10 minutes or less. The motor can be pulled in 10 minutes or less. Disconnecting your fuel lines, that's all you have to do oil and fuel lines. We are going to maintain the same pull, uh, pull system here for backup. Uh, no problems. In case your starter or your battery goes dead or something like that, you can always start, start this system because it has a self-contained magneto so the snowmobile motor r runs without a battery. We have to come up with some way of filtering the air that goes into the carburetors here. And of course, we're going to have the uh, the uh, fender for the uh, rear tire that helps contain uh, any kind of water or dirt or anything, keeps it away from the motor. As soon as we get our gas tank mounted in here, uh, we went with a higher gas tank here to eliminate the fuel pump that comes with the uh, snowmobile. The snowmobile uses a a fuel pump to pressurize or pump fuel into the carburetors. This system here is gravity fed with a reserve valve on the tank. So essentially you run it down the road until, uh, until you run out on your standard uh, shutoff valve and then you switch over to your reserve. Same thing as a motorcycle. So you, if you pay attention to that, you always have fuel to, enough to get to the gas station. We'll use the, uh, the warning light uh, that came with the snowmobile for low oil. If your oil runs low, we'll trip a light on the, uh, the dash here that shows that we need to add oil. This, our goal here initially was to have a 300 pound vehicle ready to go without a gas, without fuel or rider, of course. And we're running about 50 pounds overweight right now as it sits. So we have to go through a reduction program and we think we can accomplish it by going to a, a more expensive uh, rims and switching over to uh, motorcycle rotors.